All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another uh, rendition of Community College, uh, a place where we're coming to learn and to grow uh, together. Uh, we've got a cool artist and authors a uh, couple of weeks that's kicking off today and really excited to introduce some very special guests and some friends into the conversation this week. Uh, but like we always do at this time, if you're rocking with us for the very, very first time, I'll share my screen and just talk through what Community College actually is. Uh, it was born at Stanford University and the concept is to reclaim some of the narrative of uh, Community College. You might've heard it referred to as a stepping stone to get to an Ivy League like Stanford before, or you might have pres prescribed, um, been prescribed community college after telling somebody a big dream as a way to dampen and tamper uh, down some of what you've uh, been hoping for. So we're taking community college as the folks who sit at the margins and not necessarily in the mainstream uh, to take those two words, community, which means so much for black and brown people in our culture, and then also uh, college, what was prescribed to us by our uh, elders and by our ancestors as a way to do better in the next generation than, than they were able to do for themselves. Uh, taking those two powerful concepts and putting them together uh, to, to change the narrative around that. So welcome to Community College and uh, just setting some norms for the space and for the room. Uh, this will be a conversation that's really geared around uh, the arts and love um, and culture and design today. Uh, we've talked through a number of topics in the first four weeks, but we're gonna center on those topics today. Um, representation really matters to us. So you've got lots of people from different walks of life in the space right now. Uh, this is a safe space. So this is a family kind of after Sunday uh, service type of chill out on the porch, drink some lemonade and eat some food while you kind of hang out with your family type of vibe here. Uh, feel free to just observe and listen. Feel free to hop into the chat. However you'd like to show up in the space is uh, totally uh, up to you. We don't want to be performative here. Um, feel free to just make yourself comfortable in at home. So with that, uh, welcome to Community College. And the tagline for this quarter is Designing World Peace, where peace uh, is an acronym for policy, the environment, uh, AI and ML technology, culture, and ethics. So everything we talk about uh, is along the tagline of designing world peace for this quarter. And the question that we started off with uh, over a year ago was how do we make space for black and brown genius expertise and creativity? Um, so at Stanford and abroad, we'd want to uh, figure out ways that are interesting in order to bring students, um, corporate America, the community and everyone at large into a space where we can all learn and grow from each other. So. It's been 18 months plus, and we're, uh, we're still kicking and having a good time. So we appreciate y'all for rocking with us and helping us to achieve what we've achieved so far. Uh, quick shout out to the team uh, on the Stanford side who's helped to put this together. Uh, Brandon in the upper left, that's me. Uh, we've got Ariam, Pia, Adrian, Nari, and Marvell. And uh, on behalf of all of us, I wanna say it's really nice to meet you. And uh, with that, I want, to, I want to jump into a little bit of an activity that y'all saw on Instagram uh, this past week. Uh, you've seen the visual that is about inspiration and what fuels you as you do your creative work. And I want to uh, maybe talk to our special guest, uh, let you all guide this piece of the conversation. But first, let me do a quick introduction, uh, if that's okay. So. With that, I'm, I'm going to uh, pop up my slides here and read off. Um, man, y'all, we are so fortunate to have some really dynamic brothers and sisters here, but um, let me do this quickly. So to kick off, uh, we've got Estelle here with us, um, gracing us with her presence. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you for agreeing to join us. Uh, just a, a bit about her, if you're not familiar with her um, music or with her um, entrepreneurship or her foundation. Uh, Estelle is a, a climactic rise uh, from the West London MC world to uh, Grammy award-winning international artistry. Uh, she was born the second of nine children, y'all. A big family in a religious Senegalese and Grenadian family. Uh, she learned early to escape life's daily pressures through music. 
Uh, as a recording artist, Estelle has released five, y'all, five studio albums and countless collaborations and features uh, that have crossed many genres and generations of artists. Um, y'all probably know American Boy featuring Kanye West uh, has won a Grammy for that song and has been nominated on multiple occasions. Uh, she guest stars on a popular episode of Fox's Empire uh, in her acting career and is also doing work um, with her foundation. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the foundation later on, but um, other than that, she's got a really cool feature uh, on Cartoon Network's Emmy-nominated hit show called Steven's Universe. And uh, for all of y'all with kids and with family, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what that means to, to break from musicianship and artistry and into that world of uh, the kids that we're all juggling and struggling to raise these days. Um, so with all of these accomplishments in Estelle's career, she understands that she could not have made it to this point without the help and guidance of family and mentors, which is a community that we talk so much about. So um, I'll, I'll pause the intro there, but just uh, Estelle, we appreciate you uh, stopping by today. Uh, big gratitude and thank you. Thank you. All right, as, as Estelle, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm gonna move over to uh, our second guest of honor here, Anytime Bariola. He's a visionary entrepreneur and artist uh, who's been designing culture and build, building a scalable and valuable uh, business storytelling and doing technology partnerships globally. Uh, Three-time best-selling, eight-time award-winning author who wrote the books that the Obamas and Oprah Winfrey owns, Anytime emerged from influencer to male author of the year with an NAACP nomination for his outstanding literary work. Uh, Anytime is a co-founder of St. Miles Creative Agency, a creative sanctuary where ideas are actualized and culture is preserved. The, the agency was recently inducted into the Hennessy Never Stop and Never Settle Society a million dollar program to champion the next generation of black entrepreneurs. St. Miles offers varied verticals, including writer's house to support creatives with mastering the process of publishing, marketing and distribution of their stories, along with Design Lab an innovative hub where creatives program culture. Uh, Anytown is also the co-founder of a company called Flourish. We'll talk about entrepreneurship a little later, but this is a new premier marketplace to discover and shop black brands. So a big salute um, for that endeavor. I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, the black dad in the flesh, uh, anytime Barriola, ladies and gentlemen, thank you brother for being here. You know, no doubt. looks like I got the same sweater on in the photo, but I guarantee it's a different sweater. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe to kick this off, the first question that we had and the first activity that I wanted to um, have y'all kind of co-lead us into was this one about um, your sources of inspiration. So I read a little bit about each of you and mom, mama taught me ladies first Estelle. So I wanted to pop into this particular slide and ask you just lately, if you've got any words to start the conversation off. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, as um, an entrepreneur, like what kinds of things fill you up and then we'll give uh, any time a couple minutes to uh, to say his piece as well. But feel free to take two or three minutes to share a little bit about your sources of inspiration on a daily basis and throughout your career. Um, thanks for having me. This is this is gonna this is an honor, and I'm I'm grateful to be able to share. Hi, hi, Barry. How you feeling, sir? Um, what up? Uh, so for me, and we and we talk about this all the time when we do Love on Wednesday. My um, inspiration is every day. Is literal and acutely what I go through every day I'm not the artist that's like let me go take a sabbatical and do this thing and then come back and there's this blah. you know I'm, I'm not I, I learned that's not for me I think I've tried every iteration of uh, being a recording artist from the going away for a while and then sitting in a wood in a forest in a, in a cabin in a forest for a while and being locked up over there and sequestering myself from real life the biggest and the best and the most potent records the ones that everybody loves from me and anything I do comes from the moment um I'm a, I'm a very um in the moment um producer you know I'm not one of those people that needs to go sit down with it think it over 500 times I'm like instinct correct this is it go for it 
you know, well, this is it. This is how I feel in this moment right now, you know, and then something may come from it, but I'm, I try to stay as present and aware as possible. And then to that end, yeah, friends, um, I try to stay away from the news that's already been thought over, picked over and represented to us so many different ways. I don't believe it's true to a degree. Um, well, there's a version of the truth, I should say. It's, it's truth, it's just not my version. Uh, you know, or the version that makes me happy enough to make music. Um, religion and podcast, you know, and I think there's always, I, I, do a, I do a fair bit of just listening and observing and coming to my own conclusion instead of um, taking hard and fast rules about what is and what isn't, you know? Um, I think artists and creators um, we're all just reproducers. Nothing's been, nothing's new. We've done, it's all been done before, you know? So it's just about finding that unique way of putting it. And it's going to be, it's going to be unique because you're you, because there's only one of your fingerprint on this planet. So it is going to be unique, however it comes from you, but I'm not just a technicality. I'm not the girl that's like, I need, and I'm going to make this big splash of the things of the world. And you guys are going to see all of this in my art coming, you know, like you might, but it's, you know, I'm I'm a little less um, I say precious per se about how I create. You know, more than I just create. You know, I just get on with it, do the thing. We appreciate that, and um, it sounds like it's a daily process, and it's taking you like some twists and turns that yeah. we'll talk through uh, from kind of you being a little girl with lots of brothers yeah. and sisters growing up to uh, where you are now. It really is. I um, the, I was I was the one who I did I did I found um, how do I say this? I was the one who was you guys are getting on my nerves or I'm getting in trouble, so I'm gonna go lock myself in a bedroom and I'm gonna listen to music, specifically Mary J. Blige, specifically Missy yeah, yeah. Elliott, right? And I'll, and, I'll, and then I'm gonna go and try and pretend and sing and write and be them. And you know, and as I got older and you meet them and you realize um, they did the same thing I did. Um, I'm not crazy, uh, you know, and then my brothers and sisters, like, I kind of felt a bit vindicated, not a bit, I felt vindicated, I felt like, okay, um, I can be this free and this okay and this open about my music and this sure in real time instead of feeling like I had to go lock it away or hide it away first, you know. Um, my brothers and sisters, all of them, they can all do music in some format, right, though we're no Partridge family, we're no Jacksons none of that um at least one of them directly sings right next to me and it's it's just it's wild it is like the quote of like you know do, it became the quote of do I want my sister or do I want a family member because we were all trying to bring each other along you know that's what you do like if you sing and you get on and you do music and you get on bring your family with you and, and then it was like I just want my actual sister over over a musician or a partner you know or somebody in the team in the industry with me and so they all, none of them do music <laughs> per se, but they can all do music, if you know what I mean. Um, and, and it's been a fun ride, but it's very, it's quite just me on my own. I definitely am the only one living in the United States and they all live in London. And, um, and here we are, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, like this is, it's a singular journey. So it's, it's a really, uh, it's a solo journey. Yeah. yeah it's a solo journey. Yeah, real respect. And um, we'll pass the popcorn over to any time uh, for folks that are not familiar kind of with your story and your journey. Uh, give us some of what kind of inspires you, what uh, fills you up every morning and uh, and keeps you going, man. Yeah, so my source of inspiration, that was, that was excellent response. E. You know, he's going to go deep. You know what I mean? We're going to get that, that density. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my, my source of inspiration is the source, you know, is, is God. Like, I mean, that's first, foremost, you know, beginning and end for me. Um, what else on this list, you know, family, absolutely. Like my wife, my son, my daughter, they inspire me. They literally are who I think about when I just ain't got it. You know what I mean? Like that, you know how you might be in the gym and you got to push up that weight one more, do one last rep. Like I got them plugged in my head with kind of everything to kind of get me over that hump. And when they yeah. stop working, then I got art, you know, I'm inspired by art. You know, when the art stops inspiring me, I get more. When that stops, I, I sip some wine. No, I'm joking, but 
Um, unfortunately, like social media plays a role. I can't act like it doesn't, you know, like we shop online, I, you know, like that's kind of how retail has been, at least for me lately, I've shopped online for about a year. Or so we're used to kind of looking at this screen and getting products and not necessarily knowing how we, we don't have time to like live with it or, you know what I mean? We, we, we take, I take see. new different types of risks. So, um, that's one of the challenges and issues we're solving with flourish but friends for sure you know friends are absolutely a part of it um it's funny because as i look at this it used to be like these external kind of and friends are external too but it used to be like i guess maybe more shallow in my opinion now where i am things that would inspire me but now it's like everything that I wake up to everything that is right in front of me is my source of inspiration. I don't, I don't have to like take a flight. Um, I don't need, you know, ocean waves and palm trees, although that's nice. You know, I don't need, I don't need much um, to be inspired. And I think that's the, the crux of it all. You know, my, my initial inspiration, God, like when I really tune in there, everything becomes inspiration. A bird flying will inspire me, you know, a butterfly, um, the wind blowing, like the fact that I look outside, I see clouds and I, I get caught up in like, man, nobody really knows what those are. You know, we could like explain it through science, but you really can't explain it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like that, simp that simple um, miracle, those simple miracles that we often ignore, you know, those are sources of, of major inspiration acting like oxygen and ocean water is normal we are here acting like birds flying and planes in the air and you and i having this conversation is normal like everything about this life is a miracle yeah well miracles are normal right then to, to that point miracles are normal not just inverting words but for real like yeah start looking at it, start <laughs> saying, miracles are normal they should be the norm it should be the thing that you expect in your everyday life all right a thousand percent a thousand percent and you begin to see them the more you be, you expect them right exactly yeah we, we're starting already the first bar <laughs> of the evening goes to estelle ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> um well it, friends in the chat i i know that there's a bunch of inspiration on this particular slide but if you wouldn't mind um maybe throwing two or three bits of inspiration into the chat as we continue the conversation um for y'all are that are just joining uh within the last couple of minutes uh we did some introductions uh set some some ground rules and are just getting into the conversation here with estelle and with with any tom Mariola. um i would love to start with like origin stories um you know, so much of design and what we talked about in terms of inspiration has to do with uh, empathy for your end users, for who you're designing for, for who you're crafting for. And in order to fully understand that about your users, you need to be able to, um, you know, connect with them in some way that's, you know, these days virtual, but it could be research. Um, there's all different ways. Uh, and the thing that I find that's helped me to connect with my audience the best is kind of knowing these origin stories so uh never having been to to west london myself i, I saw a friend of mine who jumped in here who also was born in the uk but uh estelle maybe to take take us who've never been across the pond to like the early days and like give us some some adjectives to describe kind of how you grew up uh just for the next couple minutes here uh short version um definitely a lot of kids in our house. When I came to the US, the one thing that was always just different to me was the amount of eating out that occurred, mm -hmm. right? We we're very much, and I say that in the general sense of like, we, we cook at home mm -hmm. and it's every day. And that's, that's what it was. Now I realize that's even plays a privilege because I had my mom and my stepdad in the house with me, right? And it was a standard thing. It's like, you don't, when you come home from school or wherever, you're going to go home and cook or you're going to go home and have food cooked for you somewhere, right? Some type of something was at the house. There was no takeout, I'm going to order out or what you want to eat, I'm going to do that. So to me, in my head, that was that was home. That was That's home. That's to build that stable. That's I do this particular thing every day. That's how I grew up. When I came to the US, I was like mid-20s, mid 
I started coming when I was 19, mid twenties and whole other, it was a whole other thing. It was like a young 20 something year old. I go asked, who do I think I am cooking? Um, that's why you single. Cause you cook, <laughs> which was just like, what? what? He was single too. So it, none of it made sense, but it was very like, uh, uh, we don't really cook out. We don't really do that. That's like, that's not the thing. You know, and, and I found it to be just because it kept coming from a certain place and in a certain space, I found it to kind of just be like, what, where's your sense of grounding? Where's your sense of home? Do you cook for yourself? How do you take care of yourself? What's your home thing? What's your thing that allows you to feel like you're grounded? And um, came to the conclusion that that wasn't some people's point of grounding, but it was mine, right? Um so that was a big shift for me coming here. At, Cause I, but that's the culture at home. We cook a lot. Everyone always talks about like British food sucking. And I'm like, I can agree other than fish and chips because my mom's, but my mom's an amazing cook. And what you're not going to say is that my mom's food is trash because it's not. <laughs> um, but the rest of the food, I can't call it. I don't know. Like I didn't, we never ate outside. So I guess, right. Um, so to, to let you know that it was a complete different, it was a different culture thing. And then also there was a, there's a glass ceiling kind of thing at home where it's like, you've done well enough. What more do you want? You know? So like if I had my first album out in the UK before I came here and it was a lot of, yay, you did it. You hit the top twenties. You can just kind of fade into obscurity now. Right. You're going to just fade into obscurity and we're going to clown you for the rest of your life. Right. You happy with that? Cool. You know, and I was in the middle of like, no, I, I was, what, who, who said who said I was gonna do that? I I I came here for Grammys. What what do you, <laughs> what, what do you mean? Like, and I literally was like, yeah, I'm good. Okay, then cool. If I can't do it here, you guys don't believe it, don't see it. That's fine. I'm gonna go somewhere where they do, and I did. Um, so coming back was a whole thing. It was like, okay, well, she went and proved us wrong. So now, you know. And then, you know, and then the doors have been open and st- I, well, I want to say we kicked open the door in 2008 and we kicked the door off the hinges in 2008 and people have stayed coming through, which I'm super grateful and happy about. Um, it wasn't just me, it was myself, it was Amy Winehouse, Kareem Bailey Ray, Joss Stone, Natasha Benningfield, it was a bunch of us just back to back to back to back to back, which I'm grateful to be a part of. The, um, the, the, the slang, the, the hood, all of that, it's just a different accent, it's the same currency, it's the same energy, racism, same way, um, police problems, same way. Only thing is we don't actually have guns um, frequently used, but the rest of it is all up and it's all the same. Um, so, you know, I, I found that, you know, people would take me for, no, they were, they would be super excited to hear me speak and be like, oh my goodness, this comes from something new when I first came here, which is, makes sense it's the accent and then um you know they would hear stories or like there'd be like a mark duggan case when you know we had our riots at home and we burnt down the place at home and you know that stuff happened and they were like oh okay (laughs) so so that happens you know um so you know it's it's similar it's similar around the world as far as racism and all the things like that but uh, i would always say like in the words of Lauren, every every year or every city and suburban place I've been, you know, like it's the same around the world. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's a, it's a good time. In London is a good time. I always tell people though, like go on, like take a take a three day weekend trip and you'd be good. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I I mentioned in the intro something about Senegal and and Grenada. Do, do y'all have like j- jollof rice? I know I'm about to pass. Yeah, Jello Price was, first of all, jo- uh, Senegalese, we won. We win. We win. Because you we win what? We win. What because win? They are, okay, Uncle Nigel, relax. Okay. <laughs> <Now. laughs> you win. Hey, no, begin this now. Okay. No, no, in front of these people. Relax. <laughs> behave y'all. Behave y'all. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's beef. It's real beef. Um, Senegalese people win. Um, it is what it is. We made the whole thing up. We just sit there and watch the Ghanaians and Nigerians fight every on every every time. Y'all do, y'all do actually. I mean, you sit in the pocket, you know, kind of yeah. like <laughs> y'all sit in the pocket. It's I'm hilarious. not gonna give the comparison, but yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But no, I, I and I have like friends for, and family from Nigeria, Ghana, and all of that too, and that's just it's equally hilarious. 
my mum was born in Senegal, raised in Sierra Leone. So that's even worse. We're like the third jollof rice that everyone eats, but it's actually the best jollof rice because it all comes from our, um, our baseline anyway. Like the version that Nigerians or Ghanaians make come from Sierra Leone. It's, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. We went across the course. Right? It's fine. Y'all got okay. it. Well, this, I mean, the <laughs> title of the topic, the whole artists, <laughs> yeah, it's artists and authors. So before I digress down the path of like the Jollof Wars, we might, yeah. <laughs> we'll have a part two on that one, but uh, I'll pass the popcorn to you anytime for like the origin story and a little bit of the background and the context around, um, you know, how you connect with your audiences and how you got started. Yeah, man. So, you know, I've, I've always just been an observer of people, of the space around me, of the world. And I guess um, in adulthood, I realized that I'm sensitive. You know, my son is sensitive. So I pay attention to his level of sensitivity. And when people say sensitive, they tend to think like this person is emotional. They don't tend to think like they feel everything. They, so if there's an energy out there, it's fashion related. If I'm in London and I uh, be like, I'm in Shoreditch or I'm wherever and I catch a vibe and I feel that energy, I could feel it. it I'm sensitive to it, right? So some people call that empaths. Um, I feel, I've always felt the world around me and I, I translate that. So um, I translated through fashion, I translated through writing, I translated through all the expressions, the artistic expressions that I have in me. And that was cultivated as a child. You know, I'm a, I'm a child of, um, you know, we grew up with, I grew up with two other siblings as the youngest and my dad remarried, had, a, had a, uh, my sister. And, you know, when I, my, I'm a child of divorce, but I always kind of compared my childhood to like the Cosby family. I mean, I don't, you know, uh, let's say the Huxtable family and not the Cosby family. There's a difference. But uh, the Huxtable TV family, you know, I didn't really know any real trauma or any, any um, I didn't experience anything, you know, crazy or rough, so to speak. You know, I, I, I thought that my family was just like a, a beautiful family and still think that, um, still believe that. And they just really, especially my mom, she just really allowed me to experience like going to plays and going to art shows and just doing all that stuff that all the kids at the time thought was weird. Um, and some of the things I thought was weird as well, but it all kind of added to who I am today, this, this gumbo of, uh, of culture and being able to identify um, certain elements of culture that were going to be long lasting to forecast. And, you know, I mean, my story is, is really rooted in um, the community and the people around me. You know what I mean? Like I see some, some of the home team on this and I'm really just like a, um, uh, a pot, a gumbo pot of every, all my experiences and everybody I know and everybody I came in contact with and, um, I sit there and I, I take on all that energy and I kind of filter through it and I find my place in the middle of it. And, and there you have me, you know, that's, that's like a simple rundown. If that's simple of who I am, um, and my upbringing, there's a lot more detail and a lot more to the story, but considering the time, I, I just give a little, give a little taste test. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and the last one that I'll, I'll kick back to you, Estelle, is the kind of origin story between you two in terms of uh, how you got connected. How did, how did this Apple Music beautifulness uh, all kick off? What was the origin story of, of you all's relationship? Well, I liked, um, I think I had first heard of Anaton, um online, just, you know, he would have quotes or he would just have these amazing um posts up of his books and I was like this is this guy speaks the truth this guy says the great words and then he um had hit me to write a forward for gentlewoman right yeah I think gentlewoman? so yeah I think it was gentlewoman or was it the great well, you wrote you so the gray you did the you forward. concluded yeah. you concluded yeah. that book yeah okay there you go you concluded the, the, the book. postword for the gray <laughs> <Right? And laughs> i say I, I had gotten gentlewoman and i gotten and i wrote the postword for the gray and mm -hmm. and um i was just like i like the i like his point of view i like how plainly he puts it i was going through stuff and i was like i kept just the, the quotes just kept popping out at me you know wherever i turned and i, and I follow signs and i follow you know 
I pay attention to what's in front of my face. And so when I start, I think a year or two ago, was it 20, end of 2018, 2019? I think it was end of 2018. 2019, yeah, any 20, yeah. We started going online and just talking in real life about the things that we would say to each other online. Like when I were, he would post something or something I agree with, we'd have these little breakdowns. And I was like, you know what? We should say these things to people in real life. <laughs> Maybe somebody <laughs> could help, someone could get some help from it as well as us. And then we, you know, so we started doing it every single week um, for the darlings and the audiences, for, for both of our audiences. And as I started working with Apple Music, I said I wanted to continue the, um, I wanted to continue the conversation and bring it over there. Um, my shows are my play, my shows are all my playlists, and you know we take great care as a team to like really do them ourselves. It's not like Apple are just sitting there going, "Hey, run these playlists and talk over them." Be that they come from me, from my team, from like my, my whole squad. So it's not made up. It's not something that is corporately pushed. So when you hear the songs and you hear the lyrics and you hear everything, there's great care with that. And on Wednesdays, we started seeing like people love the cuffing and the love songs because everyone loves a love song, right? You know, not every song in the world is a love song, but you know, we started seeing like an up. So the show is love on a Wednesdays kind of fit perfectly in that gap because then we were able to group I was able to group together my um themed playlists the ones I have at home now like when I'm having a crap day or when I'm having a not too sure what's going on day or I just want to sit in my feelings today or I wish love felt like this day today or I just I don't know I'm I want to jump off a table and be 19 again and you know be in my hip-hop energy again like you know I can play this. And so Love on a Wednesday kind of started to fall into some of the playlists that we were playing. I said, this is a perfect time to continue that conversation over here. You know, they started to make sense. And we bring it and we bring it to a wider audience. And we, um, we bring it to, we opened it up and started having different guests on it, on the show, where we have like artists and find out a little bit about their viewpoint on the songs that they've written. And that's the part that's been cracked open people because people are like, oh, I never knew music so child felt like that. Or, you know, Lorenz Tate, you know, I've done interviews with different people. And it's just like people are finding out how they think beyond the point. We're able to get mental health professionals online and really have them weigh in and have, you know, give people advice, real life advice, as well as just a different viewpoint on how to love, how to live and how to do things, you know, aside from what we've been taught, because we know we've been taught wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm correct. A no, I mean, what I love about it is dope because I mean, these are the conversations that we are we have, you know, like we're privately having these conversations. So to see it supported on a public flat platform is what I'm continue to be continuously excited about, you know, because it's like we now we've entered this realm where I don't want to say everything is OK, but it's there's this shift where it's like those things that I guess were once private or those things that went undiscussed are now kind of open in the public platform. Like we celebrate, you know, wellness, we celebrate therapy, we celebrate um, being and doing well. <laughs> you know what I mean? And in the past, we grew up under a culture that really condemned being and doing well and like well, almost like- Tuck it down a little bit. Like Yeah, they I mean, it, it was perverted. Yeah. You know, like like good was bad. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like crying and, and showing emotion and like being yourself was, was bad. It was this perverted model where now being yourself is actually, uh, it's a superpower, it's a solution. It's always been, but it's realized. Yeah. And we get to kind of like talk about that, right? Like we get to talk about the journey in real time. So it's not just these, you know, those panel discussions where somebody is sitting up there with their leg crossed <laughs> and they look like they know everything with it. You know what I mean? And they, they're just really sitting on stage like, man, how did I get here? I know because I was, <laughs> I've been that dude. With us, it's week to week. It's it's very much like, what are you going through today? What's going on? How you yeah. feeling? And, and it's real. Yeah, we'll get on, we'll talk about it. And and the feedback is beautiful. And people come up like, you know, I was on listening and you said that. And I really tried this instead of that. And it worked for me. And I'm just like, awesome. Also you know, seek real help if it gets any worse, but, you know, we're glad we could point you in the right direction, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the direction that we're going as, I guess, a, a community, uh, especially with COVID. I think people have learned to put first things first, or it's been, you know, we've been made to 
uh, put first things first throughout this time. And it's beautiful to have technology to uh, connect us all. And I think our small community here has been leaning into uh, what it looks like to imagine a future uh, after we get back to quote unquote normal. And after this next question, I want to encourage everybody uh, to start putting questions in the chat. Um, I think this one could be plenty of community sourced Q&A uh, that you have for both Estelle and anytime. But uh, Estelle, one thing you mentioned like in the first question was that when you were across the pond before you moved to the US, there was this like artificial ceiling. Mm. Uh, where people expected you to hit maybe an initial goal, but go no further. Yeah. Could you double click into what you've felt since moving here to the States. And then also like, where do you think that artificial ceiling came from? Like, was it, um, it part culture. of the culture there or like what, just, just unpack that for us who kind of never grew up there. Yeah, it's part of the culture. It's not as widely um celebrated especially like especially you don't really see too many black faces on tv the inherent thing isn't you can be puffy we don't have a puffy y'all you guys have a puffy you guys have jay-z you guys have mary j blige we don't have that right so if i'm here and i'm aspiring to be it's kind of like well who do you think you are to want to be that who do you think you you do you really believe that that's what's going, going to happen for you? Like, you know, and almost clowning to the point of like where people start to believe it and then don't make moves or, you know, trigger, it triggers their fear and they kind of sit in the space. And I was, I'm fearless. I don't really believe in fear as a, as a way of living, as a word, as a, as a thing. I kind of, I, you know, not kind of, I absolutely just either push through it or just look at it, disregard it and keep moving forward in you know in the direction of where i'm supposed to go um but it was very much it, we had no examples of it therefore how could we be it right mm -hmm. um so that's why i'm so big on mentoring like and that's why i'm big on like i don't want to reinvent the wheel i don't really want to be the person that's like that's mentors are us i'm not that person i'm how can i help how can i help how can i help even if me being quiet is helping how can i help you know if the example of me is helping how can I help? Like I'm very much in that space um, as, a, as a mentor and somebody who wants to support and you know, help other people, help people grow and become their best selves. It was, a, I don't want I hate to talk about the amount and the type of conversation that I was given because that kind of gives it life. But what I did find was when I took a step towards wanting to be better, the doors opened. And even if it was like this much versus this much, this much was enough. I was able to kick my ankle through and push my foot through and then my hips got through and now my whole body's through, you know? Um, and that's all I ever needed was the door to open that much, you know, needed. It was amazing when it did this, but, <laughs> you know, for the, for the times. It, and I think that when people come over and I see artists now come over, or, you know, friends of mine who I, I call them friends because I always end up meeting them who are like, yo, when you, what you did, set me up or really made me feel like I could do it I'm like great thank you appreciate the acknowledgement who who from home you who from home are you opening the door for what are you going to do next to make sure that that door stays off the hinges because they could pick it back up and put it back on anytime they want what are you doing to 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 break the crap out of that door <laughs> you know how you step what's your stamp on that door how do you dismantle the hooks how are you doing this you know um, so that's always my thing. And in mentoring, I hope to, you know, and just helping or just giving perspective, I always like hope to give people that in the back of their brain. How do you, how are you going to do it now? You know? Yeah, that's a great segue to like the tactical, like we could talk about the foundation and the companies and the agency, like anytime you want to talk about the, what are you doing to continually open the door mm. uh, for your generation and for the next generation? I think uh, with the agency is dope that I don't know any other five-year-old co-CEOs. <laughs> My mind initially goes, sure. in, but uh, feel free to, to take it away with that one. Yeah, man. It's a um, similar story. I mean, it's, it's, it's dope. You know, I can definitely testify to Estelle's just generosity in terms of her, her time, her energy, um, mentorship. And I mean, y'all see her in flesh on this screen, but she's a beautiful spirit. You know what I mean? She's a, uh, She's different. She's different and different people tend to connect. But um, 
Yeah, St. Miles is an agency that um, my business partner, Steve Canal and I formed um, almost like, I, you can say on accident, you could say with the push of my wife, you could say it was already in motion and already happening. Um, you know, my background as a writer, uh, wrote those, wrote three books and a ghost writer and um, diverse the industry in different ways, um, writing and speaking and, and just lending my voice and perspective and point of view. But in the midst of like, trying to build a brand, I discovered that, oh, wow, I'm good at marketing. Oh, wow, I'm good at design. Oh, wow, I'm good at like all these parts of business that require a team, like I'm good at them. And um, I honed my skills and I discovered like gifts, you know, just through effort, through trying. And I used to be frustrated when people didn't try because I thought if you tried, you know that saying like, if you try, you can do it. I believe that and I believe it, but I thought like, if anybody tried, to like dance they could dance you know you know anybody like if you really gave it effort if anyone tried to paint and that's not necessarily the case sometimes there's like skill it's honed and, and and there's gifts you know but um i learned that like there are these these untapped and undiscovered gifts and um through the process of touring and all the things that i did with the book marketing and all that um you know and all the people that we've helped along the way we had an opportunity to uh, partner with this, you know, one of the largest wine distributors. And uh, we couldn't show up as Steve at any time. We had to show up as an entity. So uh, I think I got together with Squint. I think Squint's on this call and we did a shoot. You know, we did a photo shoot. I had a quick flight to the Bay Area. I said, yo, I got to get this shoot. Me and Steve are in town. We got to get this shoot. He said, what's it for? I said, something important, right? Like I didn't necessarily, I knew it was a company I didn't know what, it, what we were gonna use these amazing images for, but um, they were first seen for the uh, Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle Society, LVMH, um, you know, million dollar uh, pot that St. Miles won from a group of thousands of applicants, a uh, business um, that won this grant. And, you know, it's, the timing is beautiful. The soil is beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of stories to tell and we're in position now to, and we've been in position and we've been, you know, helping tell the stories of the culture and specifically black women, but um, the culture in general and, you know, cultivating these stories and preserving these stories and, you know, honoring these stories and telling them the right way through various means and, it's, it's amazing to be able to sit in the middle of somebody's transformation because they're coming to you with a problem that you have to solve and you get to sit right there in this moment where they discover themselves, where they discover their thing, where they, dis they, they reach another level. You see them ascend, right? Like you watch this, this quick, this rapid growth in a short period of time. And, you know, it's a blessing to be in that position, right? Like it's one thing that we're, you know, pushing the business forward, helping these folks tell stories, but I'm sitting here in awe that I get to see that transformation in real time, right? It's incredible. And then with Flourish, you know, the, the marketplace we have to shop and discover black brands that's launching next month, um, same thing, you know, we're onboarding people, we're hiring folks. Like I'm in position now with the resources to like hire these dope creatives that I've always had my eye on, you know, like we're, it's, it's incredible to be in this position where it's not just like a big up or a like or a comment, which helps, it's like, here's some money, I think you're dope, like come with us and, and let's do something even doper. You know, like that, that's, the, that's the seat I sit in. And, um, you know, I'm running three businesses and it's dope to really put people in position to give back in a way that's, that's tangible and, and can impact folks in real time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Um, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you, Estelle, to yeah. maybe talk about all of me a little bit. And then I just saw a question from Jan pop in. so. Jan, feel free to come off mute after uh, Estelle talks about how she's opening the door more and more. Well, aside all of me as a foundation to uh, just essentially uh, not, re again, not reinvent the wheel, my entrepreneurship and my philanthropy started with working with Richard Branson, 2003. He said, come to South Africa. I was like, I've never been before. Absolutely, let me go. And then I went and I found myself in a room with the Dalai Lama, Bishop Desmond Tutu, me, 
<laughs> and Richard Branson, no lie, on a panel. <laughs> and I was there like, God, why me? <laughs> As legit my statement. Why me? Holy crap. Why me? And, you know, I went and I looked at what they were doing and I listened to everything they did. And I said to myself, self, well, the point here is this. You're in this position to observe. You're always in a position to observe. You're here to be able to observe and then give back. So how can you give back? How can you make this go for somebody else? How can you make it so that another person has an opportunity to have a life-changing visit um, or a life-changing experience period that's going to influence the rest of their life? So with all of me, we um, what we did was we decided to set, we just set the foundation up and we said, we're not trying to reinvent the world. We just want to create and bring resources to people who are already doing the work and make sure that they're able to continue doing the work. I'm not a big, per I'm, not a, I'm not a colonizer in that aspect. I hate when people are like, you're an artist, you should have this, you should be the face of the thing. I'm like, I would rather raise the money and give it to the people who are doing the thing already. Um, you know, and my focus was on people who were doing mentoring, who are picking kids up and letting them uh, see other places, be involved in other things. So around 2012, 2013, the last major event that we did aside from raising money, not all, not all we do now is raise money and give to people. <laughs> but the last major thing we did was um, took some kids. I was, I live in LA. So there's a group in LA. We put these kids that they were working with through a six week summer course, um, spring course. And at the end of the spring, they, we took them to Senegal for their first trip. Delta partnered with us, a bunch of other companies partnered and paid for it all. It was incredible. So for some of them, it was they're from Watts. So it was like some of them, they hadn't even been to like Rodeo Drive. Like they don't mm -hmm. even, it was that kind of energy in the room. We were like, you've never been to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles and you live in South LA? Mm. Huh? You like that. Huh? <laughs> Huh? like but it's it's mentality it's what you feel is safe it's 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 in your neighborhood i'm not uh you know it was just it just blew my mind because i'm a i was 18 17 18 i was out the house like so let alone a local food place oh i'm eating sushi in south africa you know so to me it was mind-blowing that that wasn't an option or an, a thing that these kids could access or felt entitled to access so, you know, we went through the course, we, they had a whole, like, you know, uh, personality building, like, you know, they had to do the whole mentorship course before they even got to travel. And the people who passed the course got to travel. And we went to Senegal for two weeks. They helped me build a village library, a library in a village where my family's from. They got to just visit and see. And on the last day we were on our way back and one of the kids was the 16th birthday, 17th birthday. He was watching President Obama's plane land um in Senegal at the airport as we were getting ready to take off he was just like that's why they held our plate up huh like he was so like I could I could never you know and I said forever on your 17th birthday imagine that look at God you know like it these are the experiences that shift and change your life sitting in a room with president uh, you know with uh Richard Branson Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama like I'm never gonna forget that I was 23 at the time and I had just released my first album. Like that was bigger than putting out my album to me. These men had been living life and changing the world for longer than I had been alive, you know? And I was had to sit on a panel and talk to the kids because I was in their age range. And somebody trusted me with that, but trusted me with that because they could see, you know, I was, I was unafraid. I said, I, I don't mind talking. I don't mind being who I am. So that's what we do in mentorship. I had beautiful mentors. I had amazing mentors. I had people who stood in the gap for my mom when she was at work. I was on a mentor course when I was 17 and this lady was my mom for all intents and purposes, six kids. Um, but she worked in the BBC instead of was doing, instead of where my mom was, where she was, my mom was working um, for the, in, in the police as a caterer. So for the Metropolitan Police as a caterer. So she worked in the kitchen at, you know, the police station essentially. And this lady was my mom, six kids, same as my mom at the time, and was working as a head of human resources at the BBC. And I just couldn't, it just didn't, it didn't like, you know, I didn't, I know I didn't want to do that, what my mom was doing, but I was like, you can be this too and have kids and do the things and all that. What? 
my mum was like, keep going. I want you to not do this. I know I want you to not be me, <laughs> you know? So having a lady who looked like my mum was my mum for all intents and purposes on a different trajectory, tell me I could do it, show me how to do it physically, turn up on time, look people in the eye, believe what you say, prepare, you know, all the different things, life changer, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's my thing. Like, and I still keep in touch with all the kids. Like they DM me randomly and generically, like, yo, what's going on? Keep up with them when they're on Instagram and they're doing stupidness. I'm like, uh-uh, take that down. <laughs> you know? Like I'm the 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 wild the wild it's the wildest thing to them. They're like you're so I'm mean, like yeah mm, I'm also watching you. <laughs> you know? uh, a very long memory, right? <laughs> uh, listen, I I we we're invested in each other. We are all we have. We are all we got. Like who else is gonna, you know, who else but us? Yeah. So. Well, like I want to kick the popcorn over to uh, Jan. You've been waiting patiently. I know you're out there somewhere. Yeah. If you want to come off. Okay. And, good. Uh, and talk. good night good evening um so Estelle like I grew up in I spent my summers in New York in Jamaica and in the UK yeah and you know my cousins always just like you said my cousins would always um joke me like oh you're always wanting more you're always wanting more you're always hustling yeah. and then I worked in London in the tech scene in 20, 2013 and it wasn't quite there yet but now I see like I participated in the um Black Tech Fest in London uh, last week or in the UK last week. And there were like hundreds of people in creative um, spaces in design and in entrepreneurship and tech. Do you think the structural um, racism that is prevalent in Britain will help, will, will hold that down or will you think the momentum will be written or will it be getting to like US levels? I think it's gonna get to US levels. I think that the thing we always have to pay attention to is we're always, couple years behind mm -hmm. in certain things mm -hmm. i mean fashion never but <laughs> everything else <so. laughs> i have to i have to i have to, I have to. it's like the, it's like the nigerian god of people no, she <laughs> right like we, we do fashion right. anyway but we're a little behind with everything is in like you guys do not see how you set the trend for a lot of things going forward purely because the um the investment is there. You invest in yourself. Americans invest in themselves and heavily off the rip. You're always going to have a, a Bob Johnson. You're going to have, you know, the heads of whoever at Bank of America and whatever that will always find a way to include us in, include our people and invest in our people. And not so much in the UK because there's not really a Bob Johnson per se at that point. But things are changing. Things are absolutely rapidly changing. And I think the one thing with every single industry, right? And the thing that I've noticed in every single industry is there's always that person who can get through, who can push through, who is the who, who is perfectly placed, who has the has the energy, has the vibe to get the things going. And the more we invest in supporting and lifting up those people and, and learning how to work alongside those people, and it could be you, you know, um, I don't say saying like, oh, there's one person we got to look to to be the leader. You could be the leader. The more we support and look for each other in that way and support and hold each other up, the quicker it happens. It's going to happen. Like there is no, life is changing. The world spiritually, energetically is all changing around. We just have to make sure we're aligned and we're all on the same page about it and support each other with no reservations. There can be no, I mean, we, we got this far, but they're going to try. No, we got this far and there's much more to go. Let's keep going. That has to be the energy. I see it happening. Like my little brother is forever on a family group chat trying to get me to buy into this tech, that tech, this tech, another app. And I'm here like, okay, <laughs> like, all right, let me give you some research and me, you know, but I love it and I love to see it, you know, and, and I support it all. I think, I think there's ways, there's always ways around it, you know, racist or racist. We just, we just have to keep living. <laughs> Thank you. you know? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I saw a question come in also from uh, from Mohammed. If you want to come off mute and uh, and throw your question out there too. And if not, I can totally read it off the, the chat. So I'm 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 moving around a lot. Um, I wanted to really jump on this call because I'm at work, but um, took a break so that I can listen in. Um, so thank you guys for sharing. Um, seeing that you both have you know African um roots and stuff nowadays i feel like you know there's a lot of i feel like it's a trend where people are 
taking more pride into their roots and whatnot. And being someone who has uh, African roots growing up in the United States here, I've kind of seen like a, you know, um, a trend or, or like people are taking more pride into, you know, being from Africa, wanting to know like their roots and things of that nature. And kind of seeing like, for me as an artist, how like it has impacted me in like in my art and finding like my voice and the things that I want to say. So I wanted to ask you guys, like, how do you think that has shown up for you guys in the work that you do? Um, and your thoughts on like, you know, this, I don't know how it is in, in, in England, but um, like, in, uh, what do you think of like the, you know, new trend, the feeling of um, people being pride and, you know, now like, you know, want to support their roots and things like that. I'm with it all. Whenever you find it, I'm happy. I'm with it all. Um, I, I I just I know that I know that as Africans, this thing of ours is this thing of ours, right? <laughs> but look, we at the same time we sit there and we say the cradle of civilization. Everybody's African, yada yada yada, and then we're mad when everyone wants to be African. That's 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 that's, that's, that's excuse my language, ass backwards. You know? know, Rachel Dozel. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> caveats here, caveats here. Um, but it's the it's, it's it's good. I think it's good energy, and I love to see it. I think it's beautiful. That I think it's good. I get excited because I'm like, look, finally people get to um, experience what I've been experiencing every Chris christening, um, Christmas, uh, <laughs> family get together, like all the things now you guys get to experience it too i just wanna i just hope you get to experience the punishments too like <laughs> the, the, the you know, hands against the wall the you know the real african upbringing if we if we were african like you know you have to go that has to come in too you don't get to like duck that no i i think it's a i think it's a good thing i just think it's you know the world is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and it's I'm proud. I'm happy to see that people feel it like feel African music like I feel African music, you know, and it's not just a thing. Oh, it's different. It's cute. Oh, mm. yeah, I'm proud of that. I'm happy. What, what do you think? Anissa? You said it, yo, like, come on. I mean, we grew up. I know I was in elementary school and before they would even say my name, I'd be like here because I see <laughs> them stuttering in, 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 in it and in it, here, man. Like, yo, I'm here, fam. <laughs> I'm here, you know, you know you I grew go. up with like yeah. all the, every, every nuance that we grew up with, I grew up with. And it was interesting because like my dad, Nigerian, my mama from Cleveland. So like that African-American going back and forth between like black culture and Nigerian Yoruba culture is like, it's, it's interesting, right? But like you said, I mean, in the, in the music industry, a lot of specifically hip hop, a lot of, you know, like the old, some of the older artists might, some are embracing and some may be like, yo, we had to pay these dues and go through this and go through that. And these young kids just upload a song and it, yeah, man, but that's why you like, you paved the way, like hold did that. So hopefully you ain't got to go through that. I think it's important that we acknowledge, like even as parents, like, yo, you know, you do the things for your kids, not to remind your kids, like, do you know how bad I had it? No, like you do it for them, for that ground to be laid so that they now have another yeah. level that they can start from, right? Like you don't do it to, to say like, oh, now you not nah, well, it's all family. And you know, my name, my first name, anytime meaning someone with a story to tell in Yoruba, like look at the poetry in that. You yeah. know, you know about the importance of a name, you know, if you grew up in any African culture, like you know about the importance of a name. And every time my name is called, they're saying somebody with a story to tell, a person with a story to tell. And I respond to that call when I hear my name. So I've always since I've been around, been responding to the call of telling a, telling a story, someone with a story to tell that's been put in me since I was in my mom's womb. My dad would talk to the womb with my name, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's a, it, you're asking about like the culture, it's been in me, you know, like my last name, Burial, a person deserving honor, Burial-esque, that's my whole brand, the, the book. It extends that same honor that comes from the royal lineage in my family in Nigeria to the everyday layman, an everyday person, right? It extends that same, you don't have to be born into this thing. You don't have like, I'm extending burial-esque. I'm giving you a name, burial alike, right? A person deserving honor, I'm extending that to everybody. So um, in terms of last ability, legacy, all that, like I thought of that a long time ago. You know, I've been, it took me a while to catch up. I'm not gonna front. 
Like I, I used to tell my dad to let go of my hand and not talk when he would drop me off at school because <laughs> I didn't want to hear his accent. <laughs> but look, but I love it. I love it. Like I, I mean, I, I didn't catch on once Wakanda. I mean, once uh, Black well, Panther came out, I was on board. I had my 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 Africa tattoo on my forearm, like you know, like early. You know, I've been I've been with it since before it was in style. <laughs> and look at the beauty of the fact that everybody is like now googling and digging into what names mean and finding out about african religion and, or spirituality and like really finding out other things that aren't that weren't given to us or that weren't the norm you know like this it's a new time and it's a new day and i and i'm with it i'm like however you find it great we had the heads up awesome but however everybody else finds it let's do it yeah this is amazing converse, conversation so far and the uh, we, we went off script from the things that I thought we might talk about, but it's been a, a beautiful conversation anyway. Um, it's so cool what you talked about, Estelle, in terms of taking those kids from um, L.A. to the continent. It's uh, probably many of our goals on this call to make it back there for the first time or to become kind of repeat visitors. Um, and it got me thinking that one of the alums of Community College, uh, Jadena, who, who went to Stanford, he came through and talked to us about how the importance of um, kind of embracing both sides of himself and has joined a, uh, I think a nonprofit called Birthright Africa that's investing in young people kind of making their way from the diaspora and wherever they are back to that. And the question that I had for you was about the importance of that and how you think that we could scale what you talked about to just like any kid in um, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, you know, any of these places where you know it would just mean the world to them? I think there's a lot. It's the most important thing to have a sense of home, mm. have a sense of belonging. Even if you got to create it for yourself is the most important thing. The, um, so to me, it was in, that's where I realized I, my first trip back home was with my grandma when I was seven. And she took me and my cousin and we walked all over Senegal. I don't know how she knew the roads. I don't know how the hell, she, I don't know my grandma's magic. But she knew what to do and she knew where we were going. And when I look at it now as an adult, I say to myself, self, like, do you understand how powerful, how incredible you are that you are related and have this lineage of women in your family and many of family that know, it can tell you the road that they were born, that you were born to can tell you when you land back in Senegal, here's where you go and here's what, here's where we own. Here's the road you take. Here's where you, here's where you can forever go in this planet and sit down. Right. And I think about that often. I think about how badass my grandma is. Like we literally got dropped off in the middle of nowhere. And she was like, all right, cool. The Grand Daga bus, which is like the, the dollar van, they dropped us off in the middle of nowhere. And we just walked and then we got on a boat and then we were at the village. There were no road signs. I don't know. <laughs> this is the middle of black. This is the middle of, uh, I want to say, um, early 90s Africa. So, you know, outside of certain spaces, yeah, there were no road signs and no, no lights. And we were just walking. And she knew, what, she knew what it was and we were good. That's some, that's some next level. I don't even understand how to be as a woman, as a human being in that scenario. My grandma knew exactly what it was and we were good, right? That's some badass. And I think about that when I get nervous and I think about that when I'm scared of things like, yo, my grandma, I, that blood runs in my veins. I'm good. I'm straight. I'm good. Ah, tell me something. I'm straight. You know, it is, it's things like that, that to me, you have, we have to give to each other. We have to give to our kids. We have to give to each other, period. I don't care what age you are. The only resistance I found, and this is where it becomes, how can we scale this? The resistance I found was again in fear from parents of the kids, like mm -hmm. taking my kid to Africa yeah. because of propaganda, because of what they'd heard. <laughs> no one had been, you know? Cut to 2021, it took Cardi B going and being like, yo, this is Nigeria. Oh my goodness, for people to be like, I'm going to Nigeria next year for New Year's. <laughs> what? That's been Nigeria. That's, you know, that's been, like, you know, and you look at the, the regardless of what the economy looks like what people are used to because people eat with their eyes right what you're used to seeing and what you're used to feeling it exists in africa 
So it's kind of like, hey, like I want people to, I want us to know that we can go anywhere you want to go. I want our, the parents of the, the um, <laughs> thank you, Jess. I just don't know. You know, I want, I want the parents of the kids who are scared to take their kids to Africa to be like, to, to stop that energy because you're cutting, you're cutting them off from a world of experience and a world of freedom and a world of confidence, you know? Don't like stop with that energy. And if you're scared to send them, you go. But the same money you find to save up to do that thing that you really want to do, save up and treat yourself. You deserve it too. You go. Go and see what, go and see what the world's about. Travel is one thing that to me is the most important thing. I think how we scale it and make it um, is how we scale and make it available is to raise money for the people who are doing that on the ground. There are so many other companies who are doing the exact same thing. I know there's there's different things, but people who are doing it and doing it well, you know. So Let's raise the money and let's get them, um, you know, uh, let's get them out there. There are companies, like I said, Delta, it wasn't even a thought. They provided all the flights. Um, Google, like once you have a real plan as far as like, yeah, we want to take them there for this particular reason. Everybody believes in education. Everybody believes in um, mentorship. For some people, it's a, a write-off. There, there's money out there and they want to give it to people. Structure it correctly. Put it in the hands of the right people and that everybody let's get traveling let's get out in the world i don't think it has to be travel goals or bay vacations or just go i the first time i came to america i stayed in a, um, a ymca with my with one of my best friends i didn't know what it was we just thought it was a cheap hotel we got through it we got through it because i was 18 we got through it the first time i went to africa i stayed in the hotel and i stayed at the house and we had a maid and whatnot so you know we were never scared is the point here but, you know, when you think about all the fears and what's going to happen, all right, just go, just go, jump off and learn how to fly on the way down. You'll be all right. It's not as terrible as you think. So my thing is just like, let's create this, like there are structures created for this kind of thing. Let's get the money off these people and give it to the kids to get to where they're going to get to. Let's inspire them. Wow. I feel like that's a community college project that you just birthed. Estelle, like you literally <laughs> as a community, up. Right now. after this, I'm going to scheme on how we can get this. this right, done. Like, um, and the second thing, I, I wish one day to be able to talk more about your grandmother. She sounds like Google Maps before there was Google Maps, like just yeah, drop her in there. Yeah. She was good. <laughs> we were just following her. It dawned on me like a couple years ago. I was like, there were no road signs. How did she? <laughs> Not the same way must get on a boat. Uh, on a canoe boat too like I was like wait don't... and then we ended up in a village it was just, yeah. they were wait, awaiting our well awaiting us arriving it was just like who who sent a carrier pigeon because of course there were no telephone <laughs> and, and who knew we were coming it was very it was it was the wildest couldn't have done it but then it let me know there was there's a whole there are civilizations and other ways of being that are not telephone and mm-hmm. iPhone and there are whole other ways of being that are just brilliant and our, our groans really relied on it and knew what it was and know exactly how to move. And that's what we come from. So mm. why, are we so, why are we so afraid to tap back into that and be that bold and be that like, look, listen about ourselves and our futures and our lives. And regardless of what people are talking about, go and get ours. Why are we so scared? You know? Come on, talk that talk. Hey. E, talk that talk. <laughs> You know, I get in my bag a little, but like, I really like, I, I don't understand fear. I don't understand overthinking. I don't understand trepidation. I understand action. I understand intent. I understand knowing that I am protected and I'm, when I move, we, we move. And, you know, I got it. Or I'll learn it along the way. I'll be all right. I'm going to let you cool off for a second. I saw <laughs> you, you hot over there. Uh, I saw a little... <laughs> Question come in from Jan. You want to come off mute and uh, talk to Anton real fast because uh, Estelle needs to just yeah. on mute. <laughs> how are you? you? Um, so Anton, how do you deal with being like a highly sensitive or highly aware person and deal with so many different energies that come your way while you're personal branding? I mean, you're on, you know, social media, and it goes back to you know protecting ourselves and having safe spaces. How do you do it for yourself? Yeah, anytime I feel depleted, like I make sure I get I get full. You know, you you kind of know your ebbs and flows, and um, I have a bunch of parameters that I set up, right? Like, I mean, I 
I've gotten to the point where I pray while I'm having a conversation. I could be talking to somebody and just, you know, the, you could feel what's what, you know, you look in somebody's eyes, you see what's happening. And uh, you, I, I can pray while you're talking or while I'm having a conversation with you just for that, number one, that, that, that layer of protection, but also um, to deliver what I'm here to, what I'm called, what I'm on assignment here to deliver in this moment. So, you know, like people say it's wrong to be fully yourself, but like when you get still, you're tapping into, you're, you know, you're tapping into source, right? Like you're, you're, you're agreeing with what God said that you are, who God said that you are, right? When that comes into alignment, then you can then, as it's still said, enter the world as that overflowing, full of, full of God, full of yourself, right? Like you then enter that space like that. You then enter, but when you feel depleted, when you feel like those things have, have taken from you, right? And you have no more to give. That's when you got to retreat. That's when you got to get back into solitude. So, you know, a lot of people took 2020 as, um, I, I'm so many different ways, but something that it taught us is like, yo, that stillness, that solitude that we all avoid is actually, a, it's, it's a cheat code. You know what I mean? Like if you feel like you're overwhelmed, if you feel like you're doing too much, if you feel like you're out of control, which is actually a good thing, because if you're out of control, you know, who is in control, right? Like if you're in control, then that's actually what you need to be kind of like afraid of. <laughs> We're always worried about like, oh, there's, I don't know what's gonna happen next. I'm not in control. Like, well, you're exactly where you should be. That's the pocket you need to stay in and get real comfortable there. You know, get comfortable in that free fall. You ain't, you ain't hit your head and, you know, ended it all yet, you know? So get comfortable jumping. So, um, I deal with the energies is like, again, like recharging every day and knowing that I'm actually an energy that's, that, you know, like being self-aware and knowing that like when I enter rooms, what type of space that consumes, like being aware of my own self, being aware of like what I come with, you know, how I'm perceived, I'm, I'm, I'm acutely aware of that. So I know and I can feel when I need to just like take a break and I don't mind, I don't got no FOMO, I don't care if I miss it. You know, I don't, I don't chase nothing. Like I align what's already mine. You know, I say that all the time. I align what's already been destined for me, what's already mine. I don't have to, I could just sit there as last year showed and receive. I don't even have, I don't have to do anything, but like be still and, and get in that alignment to receive. Cause last year I made a lot of money. I ain't do nothing to earn it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and there've been years where I did a lot to earn it and ain't make nearly. <laughs> oh, oh, it's I, famous, yeah. I'm in the way. Yeah. So like that whole get out the way, move, get out the way. you like, yeah, he was on to something, wasn't he? You thought he was talking about, uh-oh, lights out. Nah, my man was on some like <laughs> yeah. a line, you know, like that's, it's a different thing, yo. Like this life we just have misunderstood. There's a lot to it. There's a lot there. And I'm, I don't, how I know that, I, that I've, I've grown and I know more is that I don't, I, I don't know a lot. So I don't even come here like I know like, you know, more. I, I know some things because I've been through some, through some things. I'm tapped in in a, in a, in a unique kind of way. But it, in doing so, I, don't, I know I don't know much. But I know that I got to preserve my peace. I know that I'm not my best self um, as a servant. When I'm depleted, I know how I am when, I, when I'm depleted. I know how I feel when I'm about to start getting depleted. I know the frustration that alerts me and alarms me. Like, I know the whole play. <laughs> and if you pay attention to yourself long enough and sit with yourself, you'll know when you need to recharge. You'll know when you need to step away from somebody or something. You know when this assignment isn't yours. You'll know when you're not a savior. You need to give this, let this thing go, surrender this thing. You're not here to help that person. You know, you could get in the way by trying to be a help, lend a help, helping hand. So um, it's just about tuning in and we all can tune into that frequency. We just got to tune out of all the things in this, well, not all the things, but social media, news, like podcasts sometimes, thought leaders, and even sometimes family and research and get tuned back into, I don't want to say religion, I'll say faith. Yeah. I'll say God, I'll say music, I'll say friends, real ones. Um, family books nature yourself self which should be under friends right family art you were art you were your friend you were your family yeah i feel like we didn't talk 
so much about art uh, in this conversation, but where it went is, I think, the right place, the right time, um, the right conversation for the community that we have right here. Um, I know that we've just got like seven minutes left. So I wanted to maybe tee up Estelle one more time and tee up any time to just offer um, some of what they're wishing and hoping for, uh, maybe for themselves and for our community as a collective. And then um, towards the end, maybe we I'll get in gallery mode and take a little a group a group selfie to uh, memorialize this time, and then we'll let y'all get out of here for the uh, for the evening. But Estelle, I hand the ball back to you. Are you, you cool down now a little bit? Um, you... I, I stay cool, you know. No, <laughs> you know that, like, it's, 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 that's a continual. We always have that question. It's like the energy of like, what makes you so audacious? Who do you think you are? Yeah, you know, that is a question I had. You you mentioned fearlessness, and yeah. that's not an inherited trait. So I did have a question about like where where did it come from? Like maybe you tap into that real quick. Um, you know what? It is a little bit when I when I when you say it, it, it doesn't seem like it, but it really is an inherited trait. I I look at the things that my parents and my mom my mom has been through acutely, and I look at the things that my dad had to go through. And look at the things that their parents had to go through. And I'm like, yeah, you're not a scaredy cat going through none of that. There's no way. So I, I would say the fearlessness was inherited. It just, well, I just wasn't seeing it in the way that I was trained to look for it, right? And then I think about the things that I did. I moved across the world at 27 with no family. Like, yeah, guys, I'm out. <laughs> you know, they came and saw me at the airport and were like, all right, well, are you coming back? No, pretty much no. I'm, I'm here and bleed past boy that. That's where it is now. You know, um, and I think about how many people are scared to leave the country, leave the country on holiday. I left the country to go live a whole nother life, yeah. you know, um, that's fearlessness. And I think it, it just shows up in the ways you need it when you need it. But when you become aware of it, you can start to develop it. You start to really lean into it, you know, and you start looking at all the ways you've been fearful and maybe have shut things off in your life and it's like this isn't worth it if i if i just step out and i know you know if i use the same logic that brought me to the united states i have nothing to lose like i i can absolutely do that thing yeah. they're gonna do that thing hold on it's easy you know um one thing i've always and i wish this for everybody to your last question is ease i wish you ease i wish you wake up every single morning and every mm. single time you look at something or you, you feel like oh you know what I have a beautiful life and everything I need comes to me with ease mm. I want that for every single person on this call I want that for, I want us to realize that we have that option I know even no matter what it looks like no matter what it feels like keep saying it you know what you know Melbourne Moore which is another wild story a little short version Melbourne Moore says to me I'm at club quarantine performing and Melbourne Moore said to me you have to call, she says to me, you know, like you have to call the, um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by their name. And I'm, I'm listening. And as she says to me, as she says, you know their names, right? There's the great I am. And I was like, check, that's why I call it. The great I am, Holy, you know. Um, she said, and who else? I said, and Jesus, she says, right, the son. I was like, okay, the son. And she says, and the third thing, the third thing, that's your breath, you know? And I said, and I said I'm listening to her and I'm just listening. Cause I'm, again, I'm always flabbergasted when I'm sat in a room with whole entire legends. Melbourne Moore walked so I could fly, okay? Mm -hmm. And and I'm just sitting there like, holy crap. And so she, I said to her, well, my third thing is my breath, right? Just, just you know, and she said, this is the Holy Spirit. So whenever you speak, it happens. That's who God left with us, the Holy Spirit. So whenever you speak or whenever anything comes out of your mouth, it's already done. Mm. Yo, you better that's start what they, talking. Talk about when you talk about manifestation, and 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 everybody. I mean, apply this however it works to whoever and however you believe in your life. When you speak, it's done. So I wish mm. ease. I wish that whenever you speak about yourself and your life, you you put ease and you put good vibes on it and good energy on it. Never. Ever, it's there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that something might be tough, but right behind that, call for ease. Right behind mm. that call for joy and it's and and it's going to start being the first thing you call for instead of the other thing that, <laughs> that it appears to be the fear that it appears to be it's going to be like 
I woke up and I felt crunched in the bed. And uh, you know what? No, I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad I'm awake. I can breathe today. I'm all right. Oh, no. Easy day. Let me get out of this bed and stretch. It's going to be a real easy yoga session. We could do this. These people ain't going to know me on the bus on the way to work. I'm good to go. They're going to be so nice to me. The bus driver is going to be great. The, the, the ease and the beauty and the love will start to pour out of your face. It's a practice. Yes but I wish it for you. I hope it for you. I pray it for all of us as a community, as people going forward, period. I just want everybody to just have an easy life. It's been tough. Ooh. It's been tough. It's trash. Tough is, tough is gone. Ease and I want love. So ease Ooh. and love. That's what I wish. That's Anytime. What I How so you going to follow that, bro? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sing the, I'm going to sing the first track. Um, love is rock. Um, Jesus. I mean, yo, she said it, yo. Like, I mean, come on, like breath, breath is worship, you know, it's it's involuntary, you know, like it's doing something you can't control. You can't even stop your breath. You can stop it for a second and it's gonna automatically because it's it has no choice to honor and acknowledge its purpose, right? Like you have to breathe. It's gonna until that's gone, right? Then you there's life no longer. It's effortless. It's it's something you've been doing how many times a day without even thinking about it right like it's worship breath is worship so yes like be careful just by breathing it's worship so be careful what you say you be mindful i don't want to put a you know a hex on it be mindful of what you say there's a lot of power in your words um yeah i wish i wish grace and endurance um grace because it's something that's available to us every morning for us to receive and like Estelle said, you know, we could wake up and immediately go with the feeling that was, that's like residue from yesterday. Um, or we can like honor this very moment as something that is destined, as something that is intentional and something that's designed specifically for you, right? And by you, I mean us all, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's an honor to have this moment, to experience this moment. It's not happenstance, it's all woven into this tapestry that is this great thing that we know just a tiny fraction of a little bit about, or at least we feel, right? So um, I, I wish us all the grace to be able to know that it's hard as hell, you know what I'm saying? Like there may be ups and downs, one day may be genius and beautiful and gorgeous, the next may be like moment, the next may be like, man, this is true, you know? In that wave, like joy, and then you look to your left and you see pain and it's like, dang, I'm right there. You know, I'm like right in between the two. Let me stay on these skis real straight. And if I lean a little to the right, you know, it hurts. But if I had lean to the left, it's like, wow, look at all this joy in front of me. There's so much to be grateful for. So um, I wish grace and I wish endurance because it's not over. You know what I mean? Like we saw one wave of this new, um, this new terrain, this new world, this, this new energy. Uh, the shift, we're still, it's still moving. We're still in transition. You know, you cannot stay here. That's a motto of mine. Like, I cannot stay here. You know, you got to get in that flow. That's where God is, right? Like, in the present, the present, it's constant. It's not like, after the present is the, before the, after the present is the past, right? And before the present is the future. So you got to be right there in that. <laughs> if you move a little bit, you're, you're now in the future. You're thinking that you need to get back. Yeah. You know, you can get, a lot of times when we project in the future, we, we do so without including God. You know, when we're in the past, we're like reflecting on us, on what we did, on our, we got to get in that, in that flow where that grace is, where that love is, where that, you know, that ease is, yeah. where that gentleness is, where that, what was the other thing I said? That endurance yeah. that you're going to need on the journey. So I wish ease, love. I, I stand in alignment with Stella in agreement on that. And I wish grace and endurance yeah. for all of us. Yeah. Wow. I can't say it better than in any of that, but uh, to, to circle back around to where we started with community, um, it's a lot easier to get to where you're going when you get to kind of re refill and refuel uh, with your community, with your tribe. And uh, hopefully, you know, this Tuesday was a little bit of a pit stop and a refill and a refuel for each of y'all who uh, chose to bless us with your presence and, uh, you know, you being here. So um, I'm going to go on to gallery mode here and see if we might get a, let me see how I do this, a group shot.
And while it, while I'm trying to get this all situated, if y'all wouldn't mind coming off and just giving some snaps and some claps and some mm -hmm. just all of that to our special guests here. Uh, thank you so much again for uh, being with us, for sharing your brilliance with us. Um, I mean, this is a, this is a huge uh, investment in time. You know, you've got other stuff to do, but you chose to rock with us. So appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to count down from like three down to one and try my best to snapshot our little group here. Um, if you want to come on camera, feel free to. If not, it's just going to be your name. <laughs> uh, but here we go in three and two and then one. Here we go. All right. So um, we will be back next week on Tuesday. Um, Estelle, welcome to the Community College family. Like once you're in, you're in for life. Uh, we're gonna have a part two to figure out how we can get as many kids back to the continent as possible, uh, right. make these memories, make these experiences. Yeah. And uh, to my brother anytime, man, thank you for, for the connection and for the blessing and looking forward to everything uh, flourishing in the future, everything just being everything for you and your family as well. Much love, man. Appreciate you as always. Karen, um, Squint, Brandon, Stell, obviously, Jan, Jamal, Dia, Muhammad, Pia, Crystal, Alvin, Megan, Rashawn, Esther, hey. Fitz, Janelle. Much love. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Go be great. Um, yeah. Be kind to somebody. Be good to yourself. And we'll see y'all next time. Take care. Peace. Bye, guys. All right, peace. Later, everyone.